Hi, first grade. It's Monday, April 13th, 2020. I hope you all had a good weekend and a happy Easter. Um, today, after my read aloud story, then I'm going to teach you a math lesson. Okay, so I'll talk more about that later. Okay, my read aloud book is Name That Dog. Name that dog. Happy puppies, scrappy puppies, puppies playing games. Shaggy puppies, waggy puppies, each one needs a name. A stick fetching, ball catching name that you can call. A yip yapping, water lapping puppy, big or small. Perky puppies, peppy puppies, none of them the same. So jump into the alphabet and pick a puppy name. Aspen. Yellow labs like taxi cabs and golden marmalade. Butterflies and fireflies and homemade lemonade. Yellow hay and sunshine rays are things she likes to play in, to lay in. And piles of leaves from aspen trees are what she likes to play in. Bandit. My dog has two black patches that cover up her eyes. He sneaks around from room to room, a bandit in disguise. Stealing socks and slippers, baseball caps and soap. Garden gloves and wooden spoons, keys and jumping rope. So if there's something missing, like a book or cowboy boot, just take a look by Bandit's bed. That's where he keeps his loot. Chewy. Chewing on the table leg, chewing on the chair. Chewing on my running shoe, chewing on the stair. Chewing on my baseball bat, chewing on the phone. Chewing, chewing everything, except her rawhide bone. Daisy. She runs through mother's petunias. She thinks the pansies are fun. Then she gets a bit lazy and lies in the daisy and quietly naps in the sun. Elvis. He wiggles and jiggles and dances around. He swings to the music with a rock and roll sound. His ears look like sideburns, his fur is long and black, and sometimes I wonder if Elvis is back. Frank. He looks like a hot dog, wiener dog, frankfurter. Frank. Ghost. White towels and t-shirts are usually quiet. They sit there and don't move at all, but sometimes they make quite a ghostly appearance on the head of a dog, white and small. Bedtimes are cozy, all snuggled in blankets. You peacefully, peacefully dream in the night, except when you notice a ghostly appearance lying still on your bed, big and white. If you have a white dog, whatever the size, make sure that you're always aware if they like white t-shirts or sleeping on blankets, they sometimes can give you a scare. Houdini. He wriggles from collars and runs, from, and runs around free. He unties the knots from the rope on the tree. He jumps over pet gates in two seconds flat. He digs under fences with six-foot-high slats. He unlatches latches and slides open screens. He's the greatest escape artist I've ever seen. Indy. He likes wind blowing, ear flopping, rides in the car, anywhere, anytime, near or far. He's an Indiana race dog, winner of the cup, a speed racer, car chaser, race car pup. Jingles. Tags for his house number, tags for his phone, shot tags, name tags, shape, shaped like a bone. Tags for his dog license one every year. Jingle, jangle, dog tags tell you when he's near. Kingfisher. Just before dawn, when most are asleep, he quietly watches in waters knee deep. He waits for the big one. He stakes out his prey, then swoops in and scoops in the catch of the day. Liberty. Marching bands, fire trucks, flags held high. Barbecues, hot dogs, ice cream, pie. Firecrackers, fireworks up in the sky. Little puppy born on the 4th of July. Melody. She sings when I play the piano. She croons to the saxophone blues. She wails to that sad country music and moans to the 9 o'clock news. She boldly increases her volume, enjoying the voice that she's found, and sings a duet with the doorbell, that howling, howling melodious sound. Noodles. All over my puppy are oodles and oodles of swirls of fat curls that remind me of noodles. Oscar. You sit when I tell you, you fetch and you stay. You stop and you come when I call. You jump over boxes, you give me your paw. You run and you bring me the ball. 
You pose for the camera with puppy dog eyes, then lie down and wait at by my feet. An Oscar performance, a prize winning show, and all for a puppy dog treat. Puddles. Sloshing through puddles, splashing his toes, leaving wet paw prints wherever he goes. Drinking from puddles, rain cool and sweet, leaving more puddles behind on the street. Queenie. We bought her yummy dog treats for sit and beg and stay. She just sits there and looks at at us and gives and gets them anyway. She digs and barks and jumps and runs. She doesn't listen ever. But Queenie knows she'll always rule our house and hearts forever. Rex. My dog is just a puppy, but he's grown quite big so far. He's bigger than his doghouse, and he won't fit in the car. His teeth are big and pointy. He has humongous feet. His tongue is long and sloppy. His tail can sweep the street. Beef stew and juicy soup bones are foods he likes the best. I have the perfect name for him, Tyrannosaurus Rex. Snickers. My dog's a creamy caramel with chocolate ears and whiskers. She's just a little nutty, too. That's why I call her Snickers. Thor, Norse god of thunder. The forecast calls for sunshine. There's not a cloud in sight, but I have my own weather dog whose instincts, instincts are always right. He barks one time, then starts to whine and scratches at the door. Long before the thunder starts, my storm predictor, Thor. Um. Strike one, he barks. Strike two, arf, arf. Then smack, it's to the wall. Sl Slide, he howls. You're out, he growls and runs off with the ball. Valentine. My friend gave me a puppy with a card that said be mine. Now I'm head over heels the way puppy love feels with that puppy, my Valentine. Whiskers. My dog has lots of whiskers growing on his face. Like a broom, they sweep the floor, cleaning up the place. You'll never find a scrap of food. He does his very best. He eats what he can find, and then his whiskers catch the rest. Xerox. From the tops of his ears to the tip of his tail and everything else in between, he couldn't have looked any more like his dad if he'd come from a copy machine. Yo-yo. He jumps up on the sofa. He jumps down to the chair. He bounces up to lick my face. He races down the stair. He jumps up by the window. He jumps down to the floor. He loops a loop, he hops the fence, then comes back up for more. He's a roller coaster falling, he's a rocket in the sky. He's up and down, he's stop and go like a yo-yo whizzing by. Zipper. Racing through the kitchen, running round the chair. Chase the ball down the hall, zipping everywhere. Faster than a Mustang, faster than a train. Zap, he's here. Zip, he's there. Zipper is his name. The perfect name. You can name some dogs for how they look or what they like to eat. You can name them for the way they act when walking down the street. You can name some dogs for flowers or for famous movie stars. You can name them for the friends you like or for your favorite cars. You can name them for their talents or their wiggy waggy tails. You can name them for the way they bark or go to fetch the mail. With all the ways to name your dog when all is said and done, Whatever name you give your dog will be the perfect one. I hope you like the book today. Okay, so coming up, I'm going to teach a lesson in math. So I'll explain that in a little bit. So today in math, we're going to learn about tally charts. So I'd like you to take out your math sheets. The first one on top should look like the one that you see on my screen. Okay, now the tally chart on this page has to do with my favorite activity. So we have three activities, running, dancing, and playing outside. In the next column are the tally marks. So the tally marks stand for people who voted for those activities. So for running, 
we have two tally marks. So two people chose running as their favorite activity. Four people chose dancing as their favorite activity. And three people chose playing outside as their favorite activity. So your sheet then should have a two, a four, and a three in the last columns because what you do is you count up the tally marks. The first one was two, the second one was four for dancing, and the third one was three for playing outside. Now we're going to make a subtraction number sentence to go with our tally chart. So remember, when you have a subtraction number sentence, the biggest number always goes first, okay? Then you have the smaller number second. Then you have to do your subtracting or taking away. So we're going to compare dancing to running. So there are four people who voted for dance as their favorite activity. So the four would go on the first line. Then there were two people that picked running. So running would be go on the second line. That's the number you're subtracting or taking away. So then you, had, you would have four minus two equals, and I want you to find the answer. So you can either pause, pause the slide now and do it now, or you can go back later and finish. Okay, let's go on to the next sheet. Now, at the top it says, a tally chart shows a mark for each vote in a survey. A survey asks people the same question. So first, we have a tally chart at the top. It's called favorite vegetables. So people voted for their favorite vegetables. The vegetables are carrots, peas, and corn. So three people voted for carrots. And you know that because you count the tally marks under the tally column. So there is a three there. You need to trace over the three. Then the next one is peas. There were two people who picked peas. So trace over the two in the total column. And then seven people picked corn. So trace over the seven in the total column. Now, if you look at the corn column, the tally column next to corn, you'll notice that there's a diagonal line. There's a line that goes over four tally marks. That's how you write five tally marks. So to write five, when you're using tally marks, you write four tally marks, then you draw a diagonal line across. That stands for the fifth tally mark. So it's five and then six, seven. Okay, so the one with four and the diagonal line across it means five votes. Okay, now um, the next part says ask 10 friends to choose their favorite school subject. Okay. Make a tally chart, write the totals. But instead, I'd like you to ask five people in your family at home what their favorite school subject is. And you can tally them. It's between math, reading, and science. So write the tallies in for the people at home, then write the totals. Then you're going to use the tally chart and write how many chose each subject. How many chose math, how many chose reading, and how many chose science. And write the numbers on the lines. Okay, then at the very bottom, it asks, how are tally marks used to take surveys? So I want you to talk to somebody at home about that. How are tally marks used to take surveys? Okay? All right, let's go on to the next page. You're going to write the totals, then use the chart to answer the questions. I'm going to read the questions for you on this page, and I'll go over the chart, and then you can either pause the video there and do it right away, or you can go back later and answer the questions. Okay, so our tally chart is titled, What is your favorite color? So we have the colors of red, blue, and purple. So 
eight people voted for red because there are eight tally marks. Three people voted for blue and five people voted for purple. So you need to fill in the totals in the chart. Then question four asks, how many people chose red? Number five, how many people chose purple? Number six asks, do more people like purple or blue? Number seven asks, how many more people like red than blue? Number eight, do more people like red or purple? Number nine, how many fewer people like blue than purple? And number 10 asks, how many people were surveyed in all? So I want you to go ahead and answer all of the questions after you fill in the tally chart. Okay, let's go to our last page. Number 11 says, circle the tally chart that shows two students like crackers, six students like bananas, and four students like carrots. So you have two cha tally charts to pick from. Circle the one that shows two students like crackers, six students like bananas, and four students like carrots. Okay, then at the bottom, we have a little story to go with our tally chart. And then you're going to do some writing. Samantha is having a pizza party. She asks her guests to pick their favorite kind of pizza. If she orders one kind, which one does she order? Explain. So, you need to look at the tally chart and then answer the question by writing the words on the lines. Okay, if your moms or dads have question, questions about anything we did in math today, make sure that they either email me or they can call me or send me a remind message, okay? Good job today, everybody.